What's up, Fluffer Schnoot? So in this one, we're going to be installing VMware Workstation Player on Linux so we can run like a Windows 10 VM and do Windows-y stuff on Linux without needing actual Windows. I mean, you will need Windows, but yeah. So the first thing you'll need to do is open up your web browser like Firefox and just search for VMware Workstation Player, which is different than VMware Workstation. And then find the download page, like download VMware Workstation Player, and then at the bottom, or somewhere, there should be a link to try Workstation 17 Player for Linux. This is Workstation 17, I don't know what the version is that you're watching, but it's probably the same idea. Now while that's downloading, I've actually already downloaded it. What is Dolphin doing? This is strange. It's sorting it by like date. I didn't ask for that. It doesn't matter though. So it downloads a run file, which is a little bit odd. Oh, it's not a run file, it's a bundle file. Okay, I canceled the download because I already have it and there didn't. There was like phantom halfway downloaded versions, but when you first download it, you have to do a chmod, chmod plus x, and the name of the file because by default it's not executable. So you can't just like download it and run it, you have to chmod it to run it. So first do that. And then you run this bundle file by doing dot slash and then the name of the file. Hit enter and it'll tell you, you probably need sudo, right? Yep, you need sudo to run this. So this is installing the daemon and copying all the files and configuring everything required to get the VMware Workstation Player application running so you can create VMs and stuff. Now most people know that there's lots of different ways of getting VMs working on Linux. This is just one and I like VMware Player because it's really, really fast and it feels like a native operating system whereas like VirtualBox is kind of laggy KVM can be laggy too. So here it's saying it needs to compile a kernel module and I don't have GCC installed. I don't think most people run into this. This is a brand new Debian install. In fact, you saw it in the last video where I was setting up the theming. This is the same box. So if you look for something like GCC in Discover, you probably won't find it, but I'm gonna try it. No, nope, you won't find system level tools like that in GCC. So if you're just like an end user and you don't have, you're not used to the terminal or you don't have access to it, you might be kind of hosed here. Or if you like me and you don't like using the terminal for everything, you can search for a tool called Synaptic, which apparently also isn't in Discover. That's a bummer. So I guess for this step, you have to have a terminal. So I guess we'll just do it that way. I want to show you Synaptic though, so let's do that first, because I don't actually know exactly what the package is called, and I could use apt to find it, but eh. We're kind of going off-road here, and I guess I probably could have just done apt install GCC, but this is Synaptic. I'm going to install this package through Synaptic. It's pretty ugly because it's a GTK application, and I'm running it in KDE, which is cute, but I like my package manager front ends, and it seems to have worked, but now we're missing the kernel headers, so we got to get those too. Took a few tries, but I found it. It'd be cool if it told me exactly what was needed so we didn't hit all these bumps along the way, like each step of the way, but whatever. And now we try to launch it again. Hopefully, okay, before you can run VMware, several modules must be compiled and loaded into the running kernel. So another way of doing this would be required application is missing in modfig. Hmm. Okay, so I did a little debugging and there is a v there's a bunch of VMware tools that are installed, and there's VMware mod config. So I ran that, and it said we needed lib AIO. Apparently, this is like a system level library that it's for asynchronous stuff. I I don't know, but let's try to install it again, and it failed once more. All right, we're back, and we're going to try something new. I went to Google, and somebody says run this command. So I haven't run it yet. I followed the link, went back here. And it does talk a bit about it, it's right here on the bottom. So let's copy it, fire up a terminal, and it's probably gonna need sudo. Though let's run it without it to see what it says. Yeah, so we need sudo, and it's saying we don't have G settings support. I don't know if that's a blocker or not, but. Glib does not have G settings support. Dang, we're running into a lot of trouble here. So this error is weird. Glib does not have G settings support. I did some research and the, the it doesn't seem like anybody knows what this is. Somebody said that had something to do with Secure Boot. And I don't know how you'd get Secure Boot out of Glib does not have G settings support, but it was marked as like solved or closed. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on a hunch that Glib and G settings have to do with the GTK 
stuff. So let's go ahead and install some gconf g settings junk. That did not fix it. Let's see if we have build essentials installed. So this time I installed a bunch of build stuff and let's see if it worked. Hey, look at that. It looks like I was missing the essential, like, build, build essential package, whatever. Sweet. Okay, so I will, let's see, make sure it works, actually. Yes, there it is. You have to accept the end user license agreement because this is not open source. Like, VirtualBox and KVM is all open source. VMware Workstation Player is not. But if you're willing to accept the license agreement, you'll get better performance. There's a part where if you have a license key, you gotta add it, but this is Workstation Player, and that is free to use for non-commercial use. And there we go. I don't know why this box is over here, but thank you for using VMware Player. Boom. Okay, so since we had to do a fair amount of debugging in this video, I don't wanna make this too bloated, so if you followed these steps and you installed VMware Workstation Player, it worked out of the box for you, that's great. But if you're like me and you ran into some troubles, I'll list the steps that I followed in the description and I will follow this video up with another video showing how to install Windows 10 and probably 11 or something like that. But it's pretty self-explanatory. If you made it this far, you can probably do it on your own. Otherwise, you can wait for the next video and we can walk through it together. But until then, I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe and you can become a member if you really super ultra liked it. You want to support me. But as always, I appreciate all your support. And thanks for watching.